Well, thank you very much. Now, if you're a fashion follower, you'll know that London Fashion Week has just come to an end. For everyone who took part, now it's the time to take stock and hopefully count uh, contacts and contracts. Shows like the one in London are a perfect opportunity for young designers to get their work noticed and a chance for a shot at international success. Well, among those looking for their big break was a group of South African designers, and one of them is here in the studio. Henny Esterhazen runs the fashion uh, label, Henny. Uh, we're also joined by Theo uh, Ombalala, who's a creative director of the Ubuntu International Project and initiative to grow talent from emerging markets. Well, thank you both uh, for being with us. Thank you. Can I start with you, Henny? Is there such a thing? I mean, we hear about South Africa being the rainbow nation, and here you are, you know, a perfect <laughs> example of it. So can we talk about South African fashion? Surely you've all come from different places, and, and there are different fashions. Well, I think the biggest thing for me coming out to London was, in fact, just that, that, you know, there is no real such a thing as South African fashion. We all very different, different cultures, different inspirations, different, you know, points of view. Um, I think the biggest thing is the merging of, you know, all those different sort of aspects, and that's what creates the sort of aesthetic that is referred to as an African fashion. So what's your organisation trying to do with fashion? I mean, you're very involved, I mean, in, in trying to promote it. Absolutely. Well, it is an initiative that seeks to, if you like, identify a first and foremost pan-South African aesthetic that has cultural reference, that is intelligent, that fuses um, things like rural crafters, traditional techniques with a contemporary um, sort of, um, um, what can I call it, an aesthetic um, fusing so, uh, that so, both so, together. So are we going to see what? I mean, a bit of sari material from Durban in there mixing <laughs> with what? I don't know what, what Afrikaners well, used to wear, yeah, but uh, well, uh, Lindsay. That's, that's quite a good idea, that's isn't that's it? That's a wonderful <laughs> idea, but that's possibly what we're talking about, yes. It's taking all those wonderful different aspects and and obviously it's up, up, you know, to the design in terms of their interpretation and what they want to do with it. But I mean, the thing is that we've got so many wonderful things to pull from in terms of you know, inspiration and resources. Um, so that's a wonderful idea, actually. Yes. I think and, I might do that. Yes. Can, can I say, I mean, do. Um, yeah, Ubuntu, your yes. organization, an yes. ancient concept. Uh, in, 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 uh, you know, I can't be human unless, unless I recognize the humanity in you. I think, I think that's more or less yes. it. One of the things, though, that, that that struck me when I lived in, in South Africa was oh. the way in which South African politicians, for example, especially the men, yeah. had to kind of borrow from West Africa when they turned up in Parliament for the first yeah. time because there wasn't a, a, a South African yes. traditional culture. What, where did it go? Well, I think the important thing about the Ubuntu philosophy, I mean, the, the, the sort of interpretation that I left God is what I am what I am because of who we all are. Mm. I think in terms of the aesthetic and and the creative process, if we start with the I, who am I? What does I represent, represent especially in modern Africa? You know, the race, color, creed, that's all changing now. We have Africans who are white, Africans who are Indian, Africans who are Chinese, who have much, as much right, perhaps, as the indigenous people of Africa. So the whole sort of um, community of Africa is changing so we have I am who I am but we also have the who we all are how do we then fit in as individuals into that collective right. context Penny that was that was an amazing wasn't it <laughs> sitting there listening to that <laughs> that was wonderful uh, but in the end as I said earlier really you're here you've got to sell some clothes that's the I mean, that's line. what you are. You know, bottom, bottom line, line. You're, a, you're you're kind of you know you're a tailor or something. Yeah. Well, I mean, um, so so what? How did it go? Um, hmm. Interesting question. That is the bottom line. I think it's still a bit too early to say how that went. Um, well, that sounds far. like it didn't go very well at all. No, no, no. It went really well. I think now at this point, now we're talking press. Now we're talking publicity. Now we're talking. You know, what is everyone saying? And then yeah. after that, it sort of translates into sales. Uh, so far, so good. I think um, it's been very positive. Um, I'm hopefully going to be counting the money pretty soon. Okay. Maybe I when mean, I, I'll, I'll tell you one thing. Don't you need another? I mean, you know, Nelson Mandela, God bless him, with his shirt. So, I yes. mean, he, he, he established a new way. Absolutely. Leaders could, didn't have to wear ties yes. and suits. Yeah. You need somebody else to take up the cause. We do, but I think we need to understand the market. The fact 
fashion market at the moment is saturated. Now, we want these designers to become international brands. But if you don't already have a signature in terms of your own label from an individual point of view, you cannot penetrate that saturated market. We first of all have to work on the signature. What does it mean? How does it represent who I am? And then once we've I've garnered interest, have I've got to stop interest, you there. I'm we? really sorry. Oh, Henny Esther Hayes and Theo Balala, thank you both thank very you much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Listen, we're coming to the